Hello, and welcome back to the Five Factors Podcast. I am, as always, Tal Prince, at least the last time I checked. And I'm here with my, and I'm certain your, favorite guinea pig of all, Matt Adair. Matt, how are you today? I'm doing well. I'm a happy guinea pig. It's, yes. uh, I mean, we're deep into summer. You know, one of the things you, you, you have been saying lately is that uh, it's a hot summer in Birmingham. That just mm. seems repetitive for me. That seems redundant. like completely unnecessary and redundant because we live like in the southeastern part of the United big. States. So for those of uh, those listeners in Sri Lanka, we know that you're out there. We love you. We're, we're grateful for you. Uh, you might not know this. It is just hot this time of year, but that means lots of time at the pool and uh, just enjoying uh, different ways to just kind of cool off and enjoy the summer. I'm doing well. How are you? You know, I'm uh, I'm doing fine. I've 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 not found ways to cool off. Um, <laughs> so you know, that's it. But yes, a very redundant statement. To say it's hot here in Birmingham is like saying it's sunny in San Diego, yeah. um, a, a city that I dearly miss. Uh, I, I, I loved living there. It was it's nice to have those breaks. You know, I mean, a few weeks ago, uh, Lindsay and I had our, our 20th anniversary and we were uh, in Vail, Colorado. And uh, in the middle of the summer, Vail's awesome. You know, it's great to fly into places where the weather's uh, different um, mm-hmm. than where you uh, live, just at least for a little bit. And sometimes mm-hmm. it makes you wistful and wonder what it would be like to, to live there. So yeah, that's great. Well, we, 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 uh, we trudge all through the summer, uh, but uh, yeah, enjoying it. Looking forward to this conversation today as we continue yeah. to talk about uh, how we use our smartphones. And uh, on today's episode, uh, we want to help you build a simple plan for using your smartphone. And, and again, uh, Tal mentioned me as a guinea pig. And the reason we're talking about this is, is a large part because of the struggle that I had at the beginning of the summer, uh, where just uh, the summer and the change in schedule, because kids weren't in school, really just exposed some old habits that quite honestly were bad habits. And so we started talking about a different way to do this. So we want to pull some things together in this episode today and give you just a real simple four-step plan. And in our success path that we've created in the Five Factors Framework, we talk about the importance of building core habits through repetitive action. So uh, we bring some issue to your attention, like your smartphone use, and then you get the you get curious about it. And you wonder, I mean, is this something I need to pay attention to? And you ask questions and you listen to podcast episodes and you grow into this uh, sense of awareness that leads you to the conviction that you should do something about it. Mm-hmm. And when you take action over and over and over again, this becomes a core habit. You, you build a better way of doing things. And so that's what we're doing here. But I, Tal, I know this, that uh, not everybody is uh, created the same. And so there mm-hmm. are some uh, challenges that keep us from creating and sticking to plans that we make and just because people are wired differently, right? Yeah, you know, and you know, it's one of the things I love most about you and, and admire about you is your ability to just be so systemic and thinking about things, because um, I am absolutely not that systemic about thinking through things. Like you can create a matrix and a plan that that makes total sense out of chaos, and you have a way of just cutting through to that really quickly. Um, and even so, like I, like I and 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 I'll do this with clients because I've been doing it long enough that I know. Okay, so here's the plan. Here's how we're going to do this. Here's a treatment plan. Here's you know here's here's the steps. I know they can read that plan and go. That makes total and perfect sense. Um, and I'm very happy to have it. And then they leave here and do none of it. Right. Um. It, you know. And and it's not. It's not necessarily laziness. It's not necessarily um, a lack of motivation. Uh, it can be they're just not wired up to follow a real specific plan. They, you know, and, and so um, a lot of us are are just kind of wired that way. That doesn't mean though, uh, because a lot of us are wired uh, to kind of meet last minute deadlines by last minute rush. It doesn't mean that you get to just freely do that without consequence. Yeah. Um, if you you forget to pay your power bill, uh, the, the power company is not going to go, oh, well, what's your Myers-Briggs type? Oh, okay. We understand. Um, no, they're going to cut your power off. 
uh, you know, so there are consequences, but a lot of us just aren't wired up to create the plan, work a plan as easily as others. So give yourself some space on that, but we're going to try and help you as best we can by creating a, a plan for you to follow. Uh, and it's not meant to be restrictive, but it, it's meant to help you just kind of start to move, give you some boundary lines, uh, you know, feel free to tailor this for you. Uh, but yeah, not everybody's wired up to absolutely follow uh, a rigid plan, uh, you know, the same way that, that, that some of us are wired up to do it. Yeah. So again, this entire month, we've been spending time talking about uh, the best way for you to use a smartphone. And so again, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, we'd encourage you to do that. You can do that just wherever it is that you listen, uh, Apple, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever it is, we're there. And uh, we'd love to just be able to be part of this journey with you as you continue to uh, learn and grow as a leader. Again, we want you to thrive as a leader. We want you to find the endurance that you need to lead for the long haul. And so uh, it's conversations like these are going to help. Next week, we're going to answer your questions about smartphone use. And so this is where, as you've been listening to us over this past month and you have questions, this is where we're going to actually answer them. So you'll go in the show notes. There's a link that just says, ask Matt and a question. You just click on that link. You'll be able to ask us a question. We're going to just pull those. Or we're going to talk through that next week. And we know that we're going to talk about helping you make the decision about whether or not you should even have a smartphone. And so I think we've tipped our hand to say that we're not uh, going automatically to saying, no, you shouldn't. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do think it's probably worth consideration for some of us. But um, that's going to be next week. And then uh, in two weeks, we've got a super secret podcast guest that uh, we're not naming uh, just because you'll just have to wait for two weeks. But uh, they're going to come in. Uh, we'll have a conversation with them. But uh, to Today, what I want to do is I want to, uh, I want to help you build a plan uh, to best use your phone. And so if you'll go to fivefactors.net slash phone, then uh, we basically have a checklist there that you can use uh, to help you build a plan. I just want to walk through the plan uh, with Tal and just kind of let you just kind of get the basics of it. So you don't have to sit here and take notes with it. You can just listen along, begin to imagine, and then go and grab that resource and that checklist, and then we'll help you figure it out. So uh, there are four parts to this plan, and in good Southern Baptist tradition shout out to our sbc friends uh we're going to give you alliteration so and, and for uh, the that, record i'm ordained southern baptist i'm just not angry about it there you go uh and i have been both sprinkled and dunked so uh, i kind of feel like i'm always Covering in all you know, the bases. isn't it it's one safe dog safe so there we go so uh the first thing you need to do is you need to build a fence in your smartphone plan okay um and you basically in your fence you're basically giving yourself permission and when to use your phone so don't think of this as restrictive Think of this as giving yourself permission. And uh, we talked about this several episodes in terms of the importance of circadian rhythms. And so here's the thing that I wanna encourage you to do. I want you to every day, basically have 12 hours on and 12 hours off with your phone. Mm -hmm. So this is really simple. If you basically start working with your phone uh, at 7 a.m., then at 7 p.m., you're gonna turn it off. This absolutely means that I don't think that you should be using your phone for an alarm clock, okay? So uh, I mean that you're gonna have to just Make that adjustment maybe, but I'm saying daily that you need that circadian rhythm. Um, and and, uh, and Tal, why don't you talk a little, bit, a little bit about the importance of that, but 12 hours on, 12 hours off, that's going to be the fence that you put around yourself every day. Yeah, that's the baseline uh, circadian rhythm we're looking for, uh, for everybody. And right now, there, I mean, all the research on diet, all the research on mental illness, there's so much research flooding to the importance of our circadian rhythm, a healthy circadian rhythm, that body clock, um, for those of you who don't like big words. Um, so it's just your body clock, and you need 12 hours of, of nourishment, energy, 12 hours of spending, and then 12 hours of rejuvenation. Those 12 hours of rejuvenation, we're hoping that eight of those are sleep. Yeah. Um, but what's happening just neurochemically in your body on a normal rhythm is as, you know, kind of early morning around six or so um, for men, testosterone is at its highest level um, and not as much for women. Uh, but what starts to build in both men and women around 6 a.m. is cortisol, the stress hormone begins to really build. That's just enabling us to go out and work uh, is what that's there for. So, so a lot of our, uh, you know, we're, we're building up a stress hormone that begins to eat away at testosterone, uh, you know, for men during the day. Uh, but so what's happening is that cortisol is building and, and moving up. And then toward the end of the day, that cortisol that enables us to face challenges, enables us to go in and work, 
it begins to dwane. It begins to decrease later in the day. Um, and so then as you get toward the end of the day and you're at home, um, you know, things like melatonin begin to increase in the system. The body is trying to prepare you for sleep. And when we don't allow that, when we short circuit that by, you know, by engaging in a lot of smartphone usage um, at night, a lot of, a lot of, you know, tablets, any of those types of screens, because they're different than television screen, this in the amount of um, the, the amount of radiation that's being emitted from the screen and how, it, and, and the screen refresh rate and all it's doing to the brain. Um, it's super really hyper stimulating. It's breaking up that your body trying to prepare you to go to sleep. Uh, it, you know, and so the more we maintain that really healthy 12 on 12 off rhythm, we're going to see decreased depression. We're going to see decreased anxiety. The best thing you can do uh, for depression and anxiety is, is a healthy regimented body clock where you go to sleep at the same time and you wake up at the same time. If you miss that, you're, you're, your chances of depression and anxiety to increase that day are about 100% and there's nothing you can do to change it until your next bedtime. A nap doesn't fix that. Uh, so that 12 on 12 off is important and where the phone fits in that, it can, it can really get in the way. Uh, and so 12 on with the phone, 12 off without the phone is really healthy and helpful. Yeah. And again, guys, um, don't, let, uh, don't let your desire for perfection get in the way of progress. You know, and, and I'll go ahead and tell you that when I started doing this, I mean, it's like I knew that there would sometimes be nights in which that wouldn't happen because of the, this side or the other. But I think it's the ideal, it's the optimal, and it's what you fight for. And so 12 on, 12 off uh, daily. And then weekly taking a digital Sabbath. Again, fivefactors.net slash 46 is last week's episode. Um, and we talked about this. And you can dive in there and learn about the details of that, kind of what I've done. Uh, sort of my struggle, the things that were challenging for me, the benefits of that. But I, I think that that's the fence that you basically build around uh, your smartphone life. Um, 12 hours on, 12 hours off every day. And then one day a week, you're going to take 24 hours off straight just to create that. So that's the first thing you need is a fence. The second thing that you need is you need to give yourself the ability to focus. And, uh, and so back in episode 45, fivefactors.net slash 45, we talked about at the very end, um, being able to monitor your smartphone usage. And so again, if you use iOS, if you use Apple, if you've got an iPhone, um, then, then use the app moment. If you are in the Android world, use the app quality time. And that's again, going to measure your uses throughout the day. It's going to show you how often that you're using your phone. I promise you the first time you see that it's going to surprise you. Um, and then you have choices that you can make throughout that about how you do that, because these are apps going to tell you how often you use it throughout the day, how often you pick up your phone, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you need the ability to, again, be able to focus and see how often am I using this. And so another way to focus um, and, and not always be multitasking and distracted by your phone is to use a Pomodoro timer. You can mm -hmm. use that on your phone. And it's a way of just going yep. not now because you've got that right in front of you and that clock's ticking and it gives you little breaks in there. So you're working 25 and you got a five minute break. So instead of kind of 25 just jumbled minutes of work, you actually have 25 focus minutes of work and then that five minute break. And mm -hmm. uh, I think again, we're doing within the fence now, we're talking about how you work and how you best use your phone is you have a sense of focus so you're not consistently mm -hmm. distracted and grabbing at your phone all the time. Yeah, and one of the things I think things we can do there, <clears throat> excuse me. So one of, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. So my voice will sound strange for a second. <clears throat> but one of the things we can do is to um, really use the do not disturb feature. Use it all the time. <clears throat> you know, and I, I'm, I'm amazed at how many people never use it. Yeah. Um, use that do not disturb feature to shut off notifications, to shut off all that, but also to shut off texts from, uh, from just anybody, uh, you know, whittle, whittle it down to these people need to be able to access me whenever, uh, know what that list is, know who makes that list. Yeah. Um, and, and similarly, who doesn't, uh, yeah. um, you know, and be comfortable with that. Not everybody gets to access you all the time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, use that do not disturb feature, uh, you know, to help you with, you know, as part of that fence, but to really help you focus because it eliminates distraction. As a therapist, I'm sitting here and I'm working in 50 minute increments, uh, you know, with a client. Do you think they're going to be thrilled? Um, if I get a text message and I go, hold on a second, I got to look at this. Yeah. Um, you know, it, that's not going to work. 
you know, that's not going to work. They're really dependent on and expecting my full attention and connection with them in that moment. Uh, you know, and so I used to do not disturb just all day, uh, every day. Not everybody needs to access you all the time. Be comfortable yeah. with that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to really fit into this third part of the plan. So we've talked about building a fence and then focusing on your work, but then you need to make sure that you uh, figure out how to fill in your calendar. And uh, this is really going to tell you when you should be doing uh, certain types of work. Like when are you doing your critical work today? And that's going to be the stuff that's both urgent and important. It needs to happen now and it actually matters. Mm -hmm. But then you actually have to make time for your significant work, which is the stuff that's important, but it isn't necessarily urgent. So again, we're talking to a lot of pastors and church leaders. This is sermon mm -hmm. preparation time. And so when does that happen? And this is when that dis not, do not disturb uh, feature is going to be really helpful using that Pomodoro technique and using that timer to be able to help you focus on your work so you're not spending you know I, I worked three hours on my sermon mm -hmm. and uh, the truth is you only worked about an hour and a half because you were noodling around on Instagram um, right. and I can tell like I've, I've, I've said this to a couple of people on our staff that I can see how you're working because when I check Instagram a couple times a day you've already liked everything from everybody in our church so maybe you have a little bit of a break window there, or maybe you're just constantly grabbing for your phone. Can we have a conversation about that? Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to fill in your calendar to make sure that you are scheduling both your critical and your significant work so that you can make sure that, again, you're filling your time up with good and meaningful things. It's not that you're just trying to avoid some of the silly ways that quite honestly don't make a lot of difference in our lives uh, with your smartphone. So we're just, again, it's a better way to use your phone and to see it as a tool there. And here's the last one here is a couple of, uh, of filters that you could put into your life here. So we've built a fence, we're focusing on our work, we're filling in our calendar, and now here's how we filter through this. Um, I think you can look at a lot of tasks that you currently use your phone on and go, can I, use my phone for this? Should I use my phone for this? Is there something, is there a way that I can do this without my phone? Is there a way that I can do my, uh, my devotional time, which a lot of us, myself included, will do often with uh, using something like Evernote. So if that's true, if that's the case, can I do that with my phone? Will I see that as a good and viable alternative? So that's one thing we can do. Um, there are other ways in which we can basically choose to say, instead of coming in and using um, my phone to get this task done, I'm going to basically do this some other way. Uh, I'm going to have this meeting in person instead of having it over uh, a Zoom call or a Skype call. So there are things like that that mm -hmm. exist. That's one way to kind of just filter through your work and find how do I do my work disconnected from my phone. The second way that you can filter is that, again, if you're using apps like Moment or Quality Time, those do kind of let you look and see within that range of time that you're using your phone, you might go, that's fine. Like, I, you know, one of the reasons I was on my phone that long is because I was listening to a, a book on Audible and that's a good, valuable use of my time. So you're in control right. of that. It doesn't define you. You define how you use that. So, you know, one person's five hours on their phone is might, you know, be be experienced differently than somebody else's five hours of phone. But that's how you use that tool and technology mm -hmm. to be able to filter through and you make decisions about how you best use your phone. And that might look different than your spouse. That might look different from somebody on your staff. That might be, look different from your friend or your kids. But those are just a couple of ways for you to, again, filter as you're mm -hmm. filling in your calendar, focusing your work and building that fence around your smartphone. Tell anything that you'd want to add there in terms of just kind of filtering there and uh, kind of really people getting the best out of this and not just kind of go in um, just sort of a cut and dry copy and paste plan. Yeah. I, I think uh, there's, there's also some other tools that can be helpful. One is um, you know, it's not an endorsement by any stretch of the imagination because as of yet, they're not a sponsor of the podcast, um, but always uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's always tomorrow, baby. So uh, maybe you could shoot them a text. Um, but here's the thing um, like Disney circle, uh, that's a very effective tool. Uh, you know, one in a, in a home with families, it's a very effective tool, but, uh, one of the things that you can do with it is, um, it'll also give you very detailed reports of phone usage and, you know, what, which apps, all that is, you know, it's the same as moment, but 
it does give you the opportunity to turn some apps off from time to time. So you can say, you know what, I don't need Instagram between 10 and two because I know, uh, you know, I know what I'm after today. I know I've got sermon writing today. I know I've got a staff meeting today where I need to be focused. I know um, I've got a conflict uh, coming up that we need to focus on and move through. Um, you know, so maybe you don't need the Instagram notification that, you know, someone's posted a puppy photo. Um, maybe that's a distraction that you don't need at that moment. And so it, it's helpful that you can restrict some apps on time limits, you know, from, you know, from, from 10 to four, I don't need that. Uh, but then it comes available to you, you know, after that, but it just takes, it just takes the temptation away. It just takes the drive away. And when we're under, if we believe, and we do that a lot of the time a lot of what we're going to the smartphone for is to soothe psychological distress um you know we take this numbing tool away from us uh that's not necessarily really helpful so that's just one thing that i would really suggest on the filtering piece uh to kind of help you be be willing to shut some of those apps off from time to time and also go through and go do i really need this app period okay. um i think most of us have a a whole ton of apps on our phones that we never use, right. um, you know, so go through an inventory of that and just get them off of there. Just, just for the sake of, uh, of, of clarity and looking at your phone. Yeah. Um, because it can get really easy and time consuming to find an app that you really need that you may not have used in a, in a couple of days or a couple of weeks because you've downloaded a whole bunch of new apps and they're just kind of there. Right. Um, right. You know, so things like that, I think are really helpful. Yeah. And, um, I think those are apps that you either don't use or you just, in the end, you just go, there's no real benefit and value add based on mm -hmm. what I want to do and how I want to use my phone. So yeah, that's a good one too. And, mm -hmm. um, so again, you go to five factors.net slash phone and you can uh, download that checklist and uh, that'll just help you build out your plan. Those are just the basic nuts and bolts of that. Again, if you have questions about that, then, um, then yeah, absolutely. Please, uh, you know, go into the show notes, uh, click on that link to ask us a question. We'll talk about them next week, but you know, here's kind of the secret that we want you to walk away from is that how you get the most from your phone is personal. Um, we're all wired a little bit different. We use our phones a little bit different. We we're trying to give you kind of a basic structure and plan just to help you get started, just to help you know which categories of questions to be asking, but then you have an opportunity to do that. You know, when you talk about, when you hear us talking about things like, uh, going in and shutting off certain apps and you go, man, it just seems like a lot. Yeah. I mean, you got to decide whether it's important and mm -hmm. critical or not. Um, we're saying that, uh, there, are, there are these benefits that come from you doing what you need to do, uh, and to take control of that. But, um, again, we just feel like having a plan of action is going to be simple and, uh, uh it's going to be important. It's going to help you to get ahead. So again, go to fivefactors.net slash phone and uh, just take advantage of those four steps to plan your work and to work your plan. Yeah. And, and, and we're trying to give you just broad brush strokes on, you know, on the plan. We're not trying to give you of, and you do this and then you do this and then you do this. And if you don't, uh, it's nothing like that. We're just giving you broad brush strokes to go in and, and make it flexible and make it personal and, and tailor it to you. And we're just giving you that broad framework in which to work. Uh, but what we do know is if we don't, uh, if we don't have some type of intentionality about how we use our technology, our technology will use us. Um, because understand this device is being used by advertisers and companies and, and they're, they're gathering just volumes of data on all of us and then targeting us with that data. Yeah. Um, it, you know, so there it's, it, it, it's going to use you if you don't use it first and control yeah. it. Um, it, it's, it's, it's going to grab you. Uh, so we're just trying to help give you some framework to be intentional, be mindful about your use, you know, of, of the phone. If this is, if this is your decision, just to, you know, and if you realize and are recognizing, geez, it's impacting my relationships. It's, it's, you know, it's taking a lot more time. I'm not resting well. Yeah. I, I would say in the, in the last, you know, year or two, I've seen, I've, I've experienced more depression or I'm experiencing, you know, a little more anxiousness or, or anxiety. It may just be, you're far more irritable than you used to be. Uh, um, that's always a danger sign. If you just kind of find yourself really irritable, um, you know, and, and the best people to let you know if you're being more irritable are those that live with you. Uh, yep. So if you want to be gutsy, go ask, ask some questions, questions. Um, you know, and give your family the permission to give you honest feedback on that and, and to find out, um, you know, and again, most of us who have kids, most of us who are parenting at any level, especially if they're, you know, middle school and up, 
they all have smartphones and they all have, and it, and it is going down and we cannot teach them what we are incapable of doing ourselves. Uh, so it's really important. And we're just trying to give you some framework in which to work, make this work for you, uh, you know, tailor it down. Yeah. The filtering out some apps may be a major pain for some of you, for some of you going, Holy cow. I didn't know I could do that. That's going to be really helpful. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we bring it up. Uh, next week, we're going to answer uh, your questions like Matt said, and we look forward to those questions and we invite those questions from you. So please uh, shoot them to us. However you decide to do that. Uh, but we're going to look also at how do we decide whether or not uh, a smartphone is right for us because it's not right for all of us. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's just not. It's a myth that it is. And so we'll break that down and kind of help some of you make that decision. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you next week here at the Five Factors Podcast. So for Matt Adair and myself, Tal Prince, we thank you for listening and we'll see you next week.